Long-term romantic partnerships have always been built on an exchange of resources. The decision in who you choose to partner with romantically is going to be the most important decision in your life. Yes, even in this era in which we're decentering from men, your romantic partnership is going to make or break you. You are literally one man away from a completely different life. When we think about the word conditions or conditional relationships, it's now got such a negative connotation around it that it's forgetting the value that both bring to the table. It's like we're strong arming women now to not expect anything for themselves, to humble themselves, to sell themselves short. Why is it now suddenly so selfish to put conditions on the one most important relationship that you're gonna have in your entire life? Because we're the one they all want. Women are literally treated like cattle. Think about it, we put conditions on everything else in our life, but this is what's supposed to be the one thing that we have to expect nothing from? Conditions in a relationship protect you, men and women. Conditions and expectations that we place on our romantic relationships protect us from financial, emotional, physical exploitation. Oh, but what happened to the days of unconditional love in which people were just nice to each other? I'll tell you what happened. The scales got tipped in favor of the one with the strongest influence. You women want an equality, this is what you ask for. Yeah, we ask for equal opportunities to get the fuck away from you. Not to add to the number of resources we can now have exploited from us. Until men are the one walking down the street worried that they're going to be kidnapped, looking over their shoulder, wondering if they're going to be attacked, jumped on, sold into some sex trafficking scheme, I genuinely don't care about unconditional love. Does that mean I'm encouraging women to enter into partnerships in which there is no love? Absolutely not, because I'm in abundance mindset. We can all have it both ways. It doesn't have to be a man who protects and provides, but you don't feel any emotional connection with him. And it doesn't have to be the other side where it's a man who you're physically and emotionally attracted to, but doesn't have the resources to provide for you. And it's the men who can't meet that standard that get the most pissed off and are the more likely to talk you out of it. Why aren't there more men coming online saying that women can have what they want? Women deserve to have an amazing relationship. Instead, the common narrative is that you're asking for too much. Women, you need to settle. And men, these are the manipulation tactics we can use to get women emotionally hooked onto us because we have nothing else to offer. But why not just be better men? In my opinion, I think it's getting hard off men to meet the standard because I think there is a, a large subset of men who aren't making enough money to provide for themselves let alone another woman and then the men who are making bank have superficial conditions on who they want in a partnership they are also thinking me 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 just like that guy with the skin colored eyelashes online who's saying I'm a high value man I've got it a view of the ocean outside my window I'm what you're all looking for not even taking into account his level of emotional immaturity or well, not a high value man if you're making bank and you're being a douchebag online you're probably actually the bottom of the barrel and i know these guys are just having a whinge because then there's a whole group of men who are actually really emotionally immature who do know what women need in a relationship they know masculinity needs to be built and that femininity needs to be protected men and women are just not the same we need to start moving towards equality and now start moving towards equity women's standards don't exist to punish men but they do point out the flaws of the people who can't meet them. And if you as a woman come across a man who cannot meet the standard in which you want to be met, do not fix him, do not change him. That's doing too much. Just like we talked about in the last video, a feminine energy principle, do less and you get more. Hold the vision and know that it will be met. My name is Kessie and welcome to another episode of Good Girls in Remission. This is where good girls come to seek repentance for the sins they've committed as good girls. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how unconditional love is scamming you and what you can do to make sure that you don't end up with someone who takes advantage of you and instead end up with your dream man, or at least just living a life free from scammer mentality. Obviously, one of the biggest, most noticeable qualities in scammers is scarcity mindset. Every time you date a man who has nothing to give you, except for words of affirmation, praise, physical affection, but he's not emotionally mature, he doesn't have his shit together, he's expecting you to pay for him. You validate his broke mentality. You're not actually doing him a favor and you're not doing you a favor either because now you're participating in that scarcity mindset. You're not giving him motivation and drive to pick up his game and become a better version of himself and nor for you either. I do get a lot of comments saying like, stop using men for money and I'm like, 
I'm not really interested in using men for money at all because if that's all you bring to the table, you're not a high value man. And we don't want a sugar daddy arrangement in which we feel controlled just because a man has more money than us. We want an equitable arrangement with someone who we're emotionally and physically lit up by. I also have to say that, sorry in advance if I sound a little bit British in this episode, I've been watching Maids in Chelsea and I just cannot stop taking on the accents of shows that I'm watching and it's a condition that I'm working on so I apologize. Do you guys remember that video that went like semi-mild of that red pill guy? I don't know any of these guys names but he said that. Do you know the reason why men can date a girl from McDonald's? It's because men are the romantic ones and women are of the devil. As a woman it becomes so much more draining when a man makes less money than you because it hurts his ego. A lot of men take pride in how they can protect and provide for their woman. Despite it being the one thing they protest about, or at least the losers protest, it's actually the one thing their ego is built on. Men benefit a lot from having just the presence of a woman in his life. He benefits in so many different ways. There's a reason why when an attractive woman announces online that she's in a relationship, she loses followers. And that when an attractive guy announces that he's in a relationship, he gains followers or he gains more interest. He gains social status just by having a woman in his life. She loses social status she becomes less attractive. Women now see him as someone safe, as a good partner. Men now see a woman in a relationship as off the market. Therefore, they become like a gray area. I'm very aware that this is very black and white thinking and that there are a lot more nuances to this. Not everybody is the same, but this is just generally speaking. Take that into account. Oh, and also that other thing where women can have children. That little thing that I feel like a lot of people forget is that guys can't push babies out of their dicks. So as the gatekeeper for future generations, your standards not only affect you, but your offspring. So if I'm a woman making a lot of money and I know I wanna have children, I'm not gonna go into a McDonald's outlet and be like, yeah, that guy with the little ratty hair and the pimples over there, I want him to be my husband who's gonna take care of me and the kids. It's just not gonna happen. You having more money a lot of the times doesn't raise men up. It makes them bitter and it makes them take from you. If anything, you go down with him. But when the roles are reversed and a man is making more money than a woman, usually she goes up. And so does he because she's still bringing a lot of value to the table despite potentially having zero dollars. And what I think a lot of men get bitter about is that they actually don't have as much to bring to the table to a woman's life if he doesn't have the financial resources. So we gaslight women into saying you need to love unconditionally. True love finds you, you don't choose it. It's bullshit. All that says is you have zero control over who you love and allow into your life. And that if you have standards, you're a misandrist. It's a very deep conditioning of pick me men who cannot meet the standard. And yet at the same time, a lot of higher earning positions are gatekept by men. Or if you are a woman who has made it into that arena, congratulations, it's a harder fight for you. And you still have to deal with men's fragile ego. You still have to deal with sexual harassment. You still have to deal with the fact that you wouldn't be paid as much as a man in that same position. You still have to show up irregardless of whether you get your period or not. Or if you're a woman and you decide to go off, do your own thing and you become successful at it, you're now selfish for not dedicating your life to a family and children, whether you actually have children or not. I mean, we could go on and on about double standards, but that's it's not the focal point of today. What I'm aiming to get across today is that it's okay and actually encourage for you to put conditions and expectations on the type of men you have romantic relationships with because they're going to be the most influential choices of your life. Bitter and broke man who's trying to scam you into the unconditional love game is going to take from you and eventually bring you down to his level. The soft guy era is exactly proving that to be correct. How do we as women make sure that we change our point of attraction so that we're not coming into contact with these types of men? First of all, remove yourself from this conditioning entirely. Buy out of the narrative and create your own. A smart woman knows exactly what she wants and what she's looking for in a relationship and she won't settle for anything less. You have to become a savage with your boundaries and your standards. You cannot make exceptions for anything because in what reality is making an exception going to work for you? That exception that you make for that person is going to be the reason that you break up with them. I can guarantee you that. The second thing is you also need to cultivate your own emotional maturity. 
as I said before at the beginning of the episode, I love watching shows like Made in Chelsea because it's so interesting just watching the like relationship dynamics play out. And what I notice in a lot of these TV shows is just plain old emotional immaturity. They're not set in their priorities. They have very low standards. They don't know how to communicate properly. Their whole life is centered around relationships and not who they can be as a person and contribute to the world, even if that's just being a relaxed person. It's all centered around image. Got to make sure I get the girl or the guy so that I can have a relationship so that by the time I turn 30 or 40 or 50, I've got someone and I don't look like a loser who's single. Got to make sure I get the job. Got to make sure I get the right amount of followers on social media. Got to make sure I'm perceived this certain way so that I look like I'm this person. And that's scammer energy. Scammer energy attracts scammer relationships. None of it is built off authenticity. In fact, I think that having conditions and expectations is a cue of authenticity because you're being true to yourself. You know what's a good fit for you and you don't budge. If you people please and say, okay, I'll make the exception for you. You're not coming from a place of authenticity. You're now doing it because you either A, don't believe you can have what you really want or B, you think that true relationships ask you to settle. Real relationships that are good for you will blow your expectations out of the water. They won't ask you to shrink. You're gonna now have to expand your capacity to feel negative emotions because growth is uncomfortable. We think success is popularity, social media followers, a lot of money, but it actually looks like your ability to hold negative emotions, to be able to be alone, to be able to love yourself when no one else is around you, to be able to be patient when you're in between jobs and you're finding something that's a really good fit for you, for not rushing into relationships to fulfill a void. It's character building. It layers in more confidence, more authenticity, more resilience, all the things that are needed to actually hit success. What real success is, which is a life that's in alignment with your authentic you. And I know we talk a lot about relationships on this podcast. That's primarily what it's about. But it really comes down to your relationship with you. Can we take a step back from how we're perceived and our relationship status and actually just come back home to ourselves? Can you remove your identity and your sense of self-worth also from your relationship status? If you can't do that, you're not ready for a relationship. And it doesn't matter how many hundreds of dates you plan, how many dating apps you use, what kind of profile you use, what kind of quality men you want to come into contact with. If you can't build up your character, your integrity, your inner authority, you got nothing. You got absolutely nothing. The people pleaser is a yes man. The people please her is a no man. You'll find that the more confidence you have, the more you end up saying no to things. And that's especially true because the more confident you become, the more attractive you become. And the more attractive you become, the more opportunities are made present to you the more options you have. Being an attractive person isn't necessarily about how many people can be attracted to you at one time. It's about how committed you are to your priorities. If you get presented with an opportunity in which an expectation is not met, I need you to think big in that moment and reestablish your relationship within and say, is this really worthy of me? Is this really worthy of my time and attention? Is this good enough for me? Ask those hard questions that you've never asked yourself before because it's always perceived as selfish. You're not allowed to ask, is this person, is this man good enough for me? Because that's so narcissistic of you. It's not. It's a legitimate question that's needed by everybody. Is this person, is this opportunity, is this thing good enough for me? Your mind won't receive what it doesn't believe. So if you don't believe you're worthy of something more, you won't accept it. One thing that I would recommend doing is having some sort of physical workout regime to strengthen your relationship with resilience. Resilience isn't the same as hustle and burnout because resilience is something that can only be acquired in a journey in which you're committed to. If you feel like you're constantly bumping up against the feeling of giving up on something, chances are that thing isn't for you. Resilience is I'm facing a challenge, but I'm going to keep going because I've got that inner strength to complete my mission. I know I'm meant to contribute something to the world. I know I've got a message that I wanna put out and I'm gonna keep going with it, irregardless of the pushback, the criticism, whatever it is. Having a good gym routine in which your resilience is challenged is a very good thing because now it's gonna be strengthened. You can apply that skill into any aspect of your life, even in relationships in which maybe you come across a challenge together. You don't automatically shut down and get defensive and take that step back and be like, oh, I'm afraid of getting hurt. I'm afraid of this, so now I'm putting it back on you goodbye 
that's not resilience, that's a cop-out, that's weakness. Resilience is maybe we're facing a challenge, but if we get through it, it's gonna make us stronger. Because in my experience of life, good things take effort. Having a healthy body takes effort, but at the same time, it's effortless. Does that make sense? It's like another paradox. The more effort I put into educating myself, into eating healthier and working out, the less effort I actually have to put in into being a functioning human being because the healthy food and the workouts, they do it all for me. Interestingly enough, if I eat a lot of junk food and I take that easy road out and then I let myself go and I have no physical fitness, it's going to take a lot more effort to just function as a normal human being. I'm contributing to a path of most resistance rather than least resistance. So even though as a healthy person, you're putting more effort into eating healthy and exercising, it actually in the long run takes a lot less effort because now your focus is less on how bogged down you feel, how many health problems and ailments you have. You now have the state of mind to focus on the things that are important to you and show yourself more gratitude. You're showing yourself more love through those actions. And it's not about trying to fit a stock standard way of looking because that's its own problem in itself. It's more about what does health and fitness look like to you as an individual person? And can you take your identity away from this production line body that everybody seems to be going for and also changing up every season. Remember that movie, She's the Man with Amanda Bynes? Iconic, absolutely, chef's kiss, iconic. And Amanda Bynes was talking about high heels and how she didn't want to wear them because she was like, high heels are a man's invention to make a woman's butt look smaller. That was the trend back then. Now it's all about having a big ass. Does that mean it's healthy? Fuck no, it's just a body image problem. And actually, technically, high heels were a male invention to make men look taller. A good question that I actually feel is a good flow on effect is where does the soft girl life come in? Is the soft girl life we see online just contributing to this aura of helplessness in women? This idea of do it for me because I don't wanna do it, it's all too hard and I can't do it for myself. I don't think the soft girl life is in alignment with true feminine energy. I love talking about burnout, as you guys know, but I don't think that the soft girl life is actually in true authentic alignment with feminine energy. I think it's potentially a marketing tactic for women to buy into. Am I shaming materialism? Women buying nice things and wanting to have a slow life? Definitely not. But what I'm more referencing is the qualities of helplessness behind it. We don't ask for and expect provision from a man financially because we can't do it ourselves, because we're helpless. We do it so that we can actually hone our strengths in on different aspects, especially when it does come to raising a family. English YouTuber Margarita Nazarenko, I, I hope I pronounced that right. I really like her approach to relationships, especially from the point of view of a woman. She said that it's just easier to get up in the middle of the night and for her to take care of the kids because she gets it done so much faster than if her husband is involved. She said, is that weaponized incompetence? No, because that's her strength. Is it weaponized incompetence when we expect a man to provide? No, it's just his strong suit. That's an equitable arrangement because now you're playing to each other's strengths. Do I think that the trend of the men rubbing the tomato sauce into the bench is weaponized incompetence? Yes, I do. That's not a gender specific trait. I love more women coming forward with successful businesses and successful relationships in which they are afforded with the ability to work at their own pace or just enjoy the life that they want. I'm all for it. But I think just be careful with that soft girl era vibe because you might be falling into something that doesn't really exist. And it's usually the people who perpetuate this image online that are actually living a life very far from it. To me, it's giving the same vibe as someone selling a course on how to make money, but they're using the course to make money. We all have a right to abundance and living a life that fits us and our desired lifestyle. And it's possible for you as well. I want you to know that. I don't want you to take this information and be like, well, now I have to work 24 seven. That's not the purpose of this. It's more like, don't believe in your own incompetence. Know that you can have what you want and it can actually be easy for you, especially if it's in alignment with your authenticity. The opportunities will be presented to you because it's meant for you. The universe knows when you're on the right path because things generally do just get a lot easier. And take that pressure off yourself to be perfect all the time or to fit a certain image of success that just doesn't work for you. I love seeing that more people are breaking away from it. I think it's needed. I'm loving seeing the rise of the relaxed woman because a relaxed woman 
is more in touch with her creativity and her nurturing and her playfulness and her charisma, her charm. As a relaxed woman, you are actually ironically more productive, but at the same time, your identity isn't attached to how productive you can be. The girls doing my feminine embodiment series are probably laughing right now because they know how fucking seriously I take authenticity. And it's such a good feeling when you finally become that person who has synchronistic events that just line up perfectly. You know how annoying it is to come online and hear those manifestation stories of how they attracted this thing so effortlessly and easily, but you're never that person who gets that. The secret thing that they have that you don't, if you don't have that, is literally just a more magnetic point of attraction. And one of the girls in the series messaged me saying that she could see the difference now between how she was operating before versus now. It's not about faking it till you make it, pretending to be something until you are it. It's actually Actually more about removing what's false and all this good girl conditioning this people pleasing this playing it small it's all dampening your feminine energy and when you remove that moldy stuff from your energy and you start adding in more timber that is confidence resilience love nurturing openness creativity playfulness all those feminine energy traits your unique flame takes off like a wild fire and it changes who and what you attract automatically. So it's not that we're falling back into that incompetent soft girl era in which we're like, it's too hard. I don't want to do it anymore. Someone do it for me. The energy behind it is I'm so worthy and deserving of having the life that I want that I'm going to say no to everything that's not it and just keep going until it comes to me. You really do switch up your state of being rather than your state of doing. And that to me is the key to success in what you attract. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next week.